broke six. I gotta go. Did you get a job? No. Sorry. Me too. Where's Mrs. Colby? She saw you coming out the window and she was in a hurry to get to her apartment. I don't like you being left alone. She's only been gone two minutes and I'm not a baby. No, you're not. And she's no sitter. I'm gonna have to find somebody else. Uh oh. Time for another trip to Orchard Street. <clears throat> so, what'd you do after school? Nothing much. Dr. Feldman's office called. I'm supposed to see him next Tuesday at 10. Did you mark it on the calendar? Are you squinting? No. How would you like a big, juicy steak for dinner? Sure. We're broke. We are now. Good, huh? Great. Well, I'm stuffed and relaxed and as ready as I'll ever be. Bring on the mail. Charge, hospital, telephone. This from the police department. What do they want with me? Maybe somebody's suing you. Maybe the landlord. The rent's all paid up. Besides, lawsuits don't go through the police. Here, open it. I don't want to open it. What is it? It's a job. Working for the police? Being the police. I can't believe it. <laughs> I applied for this five years ago, and now they're telling me they want me. I'm going to be a cop. Come on, you're kidding me. No. Do you have any idea what kind of medical plan the police department has? We don't have to worry about another medical bill. You can't be a cop. Why not? Because you're a woman, and because you're little. They know I'm a woman, and they know I'm little. <laughs> so, is my breakfast on my chin? Hmm? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to uh, make you uncomfortable. It's just... Uh... Well, you're a curiosity to me. You're a woman, rather diminutive. Why, um, why choose police work? Well, I could tell you I have this great desire to help my fellow man. Is that it? Maybe a little. How about I need to prove myself as good as a man? <laughs> Is that true? No. I, um... I assume your husband supports you. We've been divorced for seven years. And you have a son. Mm -hmm. Police work takes a lot of time. Have you ever heard of hydrocephalus? Yes, it means water on the brain. Why, do, uh, do you have it? My son was born with it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to. No, it's all right. I'm used to it. You know, blind jokes, retard jokes. I do it myself sometimes. It's not malicious. Really? No, it's okay, honest. See, when uh, Eric was born, the doctors told me that uh, he had a blockage. One dumb little channel in his brain. 
so uh, the fluid couldn't circulate. And they said with out surgery, the pressure would build up inside his head until he died. And even with surgery, chances were he'd be blind or mentally retarded. So they said, put him in a home. And I said, no. I'd be damned if I was going to refuse him that operation. I'd be double damned if I was going to put my child in a home. So he's had seven operations. He's eight years old. He's almost blind in one eye. But he's as bright as any eight-year-old could be. He, um, is going to need several more of those operations. Well into his teens. And as you know, doctors don't do that for nothing. <laughs> and his father lives out in Denver with his new family. Look, the New York Police Department has a great medical plan. That's the truth. I'm sorry if it's not altruistic. You're about to begin six months of intensive training. Some of you won't get through it. Some of you who do will bow out of police work. If that's the situation, better drop out now. Someone else is out there waiting to take your place. Ask yourself this. Can you accept the constant exposure to desperation, squalor, hopelessness, death? Can you handle a day in which you might have to fish out a suicide from the river? Or pick up the pieces of a couple of kids, hacked to death by a deranged father. Or someone taking a shot at you. And worse, not missing. Can you do these things? And that's only the good news. <laughs> Next, sign your name, please. Do you want the three-inch or the four-inch barrel? Um, you want the three-inch barrel. Don't take it out of the box. Nice start, Peanut. Where are you going? Up to the sixth floor to uh, see Sergeant Duckworth. Use the stairs. You gotta be kidding. How would you like your butt kicked up six flights of stairs? You're a recruit. Recruits don't use the elevator. But look what I'm carrying. That's your problem. If you can't handle the stairs, try the front door. See my gun? It's in that box. Take a good look at it, because it's your last. It's a gun, and it's dangerous. I never, ever want to catch you touching it. First of all, Mom, it's not a gun. It's a revolver. See, it has a cylinder. That's why they call it a revolver. You should watch more TV. Gun, revolver, fire stick. I don't care what you call it. Don't ever touch it, okay? Now, how'd you like to massage my back? Mm. 
God, Mom, all you did today was climb stairs. Yeah. What are you going to do when you get to the real exercise? Okay, shooters, on the line, combat load, five rounds of wad cutter ammunition, and come to the ready. Upon the whistle, commence firing. Hey, thanks. <laughs> hey, Peanut. Still looking for your gun? Hey, you. You. Stand up. Are you standing up? My name is Frank Reinecke. It is my job to teach you Cretans how to defend yourself against an armed attacker. How to kill, if your life depends on it. But most of all, I'll teach you how to fall down without breaking every bone in your body. How many of you here have had self-defense classes? What's your name? Mary Glatzel. Mary Glatzel. What course did you take? Judo. How long? About a year. Who taught you? My ex-husband. Is that why he's your ex? <laughs> was he any good? He was an instructor. With a black belt. All right, Glatzel. Let's show your classmates how it's done. Get out here. All right, Glatzel, you're the assailant. You can combat me any way you want. Just knock me down. Are you all right? Would you like to visit the doctor? No. What a sadistic creep. What is it with that guy? I don't know. But don't worry. He hasn't seen the last of me yet. I think you should quit. I know what you think. Well, don't you care? Yes. But I'd appreciate a little less advice and more support. Okay, there are two things the NYPD expects you to carry at all times. And that means on and off duty. Your shield and your gun. See, police officers work an eight-hour shift. Criminals don't. 
So the guy who becomes your enemy when you're wearing a uniform doesn't call a truce when you take it off. Armpit, waistband, leg. Wear it wherever it's least conspicuous, least cumbersome for you. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you wear it. All the time. Excuse me, would you please ask your boy to stop staring at me? It's very rude. He's not staring at you. What would you call that? He's blind in that eye. Hey, I don't understand what's gotten into you. I fell asleep. With one eye open, huh? Come off it. You did that little number on purpose, and it was totally uncalled for. I was just teasing her. You were victimizing her, and you were embarrassing me. Fine, maybe we're easy. What does that mean? You're embarrassing me, too. Listen, being a cop is a decent, law-abiding, humanitarian occupation. And if your little friends at school are too stupid to understand that, to hack with them. all about? I'm not gonna get shot. Cops get shot. Sometimes cops get shot in dark alleys or in bank holdups. But there are a lot of jobs cops do that aren't dangerous. Believe me, that bullet in the floor is the closest I'm ever gonna get to being shot. You promise? Mm-hmm. I love you, kiddo. And I want to be around long enough to play with my grandchildren. Okay. Your old man, been? I haven't seen him in weeks. He's down in Daytona with my mom. Hmm. Good lucky stiff. <laughs> Say hello to him for me, huh? Bye. Dan and my dad graduated the academy the same time. Your dad's a cop, retired. My uncle's a cop, he's in administration downtown. And my grandfather was a cop. 
If I had any brothers, they'd probably be cops, too. <laughs> so what are you doing here? Ah, it's a long story. Maybe some other time. Well, whatever the story, you must want to be a cop real bad to take the kind of grief Ronicky's dishing out. I had figured you would have quit by now. <laughs> Look who just walked in. Is that his girlfriend? Dan Waters never dates a girl more than twice. How do you know? He told me. You mean you just went up to him and asked him? She dated him. He's a nice guy. Not in my book. What part of New York is he from, anyway? West Side. What West Side? Kansas. <laughs> That's why I like him. He's still got a little hayseed in him. One of these days, he's going to make one too many jokes at my expense, and I'm just going to deck him. Well, actually, I think he kind of likes you. If he likes me, then Frank Reinecke is crazy in love with me. <laughs> hey! The problem here is that you people don't have a killer instinct. If someone attacks you, you get them with everything you've got. I'm talking about the street. It's your neck. You act like gentlemen, you're going to lose it. If I tell you to attack me, you attack me or you get out of my class. Class, get out here. Sit up here, I'm gonna attack you from behind. No! What the hell have you been doing in this class? You had a year of judo. Your ex-husband's a black belt. I'm beating my gums about leverage, and what do you do? Get up and do it again. Tack me from behind. See how it's done? Now get up and do it again. All right, we got to... Somebody ought to get some oxygen. Does anybody want to get some oxygen? I think he was crying, but he didn't want me to see. 
Are you? Would you? I already did. Besides, how was he supposed to know I was going to turn out so great? Say that again. <laughs> Mary Black. You're late. I know, I'm sorry. Third floor lockup, ask for Thomas. Thanks. Hello? Okay. Hi. I'm Mary Blackstall. I'm Debbie Stan. You're late. I need to get here, Debbie. Fill out this arrest form. She's gonna get hurt. You're on the payroll. You help her. Girl, don't even consider it. Grab a leg. Are you Mary? Yeah. I'm Kathy Thomas. Then thanks. Thank you too, Debbie. Don't mention it. What's with the coconuts? They're on sale. My son loves coconuts. Well, that's a pretty good example of the kind of people you're gonna run into in doing this job. You had any of those romantic thoughts about pushcart apples? Forget them. This job is strictly crud. Female officers have to search female prisoners. Nobody wants to do it, so you rookies got elected. You're still doing it? My choice. It's a lot safer in here than it is out there. You'll be supervising cells, seeing that the prisoners get their meals, their toothpaste, anything else they might need. Sometimes they'll call you outside to do a body search if the stiffs are female. But most of the time you'll be in here. So I hope you can make a good pot of coffee. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, they be always that helpful? Listen, there are two kinds of cops. Doers and sliders. Debbie's a slider. She'll give you nothing beyond the book. Thanks. <laughs> So, how old is your kid? Eight. Oh, come on! Ah! 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 Hey, okay. Take off all your clothes, please. Wear included. What are you doing? Get out of here. This is for females only. You've got no business being here. That's not a female. Come off it. Hey, Mary, I booked them. I made a mistake. Nice try, Tommy. <laughs> Get him out of here. Straight to the back. Sergeant Handel is waiting for you. Crime scene's been here already. Knife's underneath the body. Get her jewelry and any personal stuff off her. Let's get out of here.
stick with it. All right, get out of here. Quick. You scared me after death. Can I open my presents now? Sure. Okay. Father first. Fifty dollars. Ooh, you're rich. Hey, 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 aren't you gonna read the card? Happy birthday, son. Though many miles away, may thoughts are with you on this happy day. Have a good one, your dad. That's a very nice card. Okay. Eric, that's from me. Oh, wow, what's this? Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Grandpa. You're welcome. He doesn't play baseball. Every kid his age plays baseball. He's not every kid his age. You of all people should know that. No baseball, no football, no hockey. He's got one eye to lose, and a tube inside his head, if it's jarred loose, it's gonna send him straight to the operating room. Why don't you buy me a dollhouse? I had to search a woman today. She done. Been beheaded. I didn't know it. I held her head in my hand. <laughs> you know, I'm not crying. Her. I'm crying for me because I feel sorry for myself. I can't talk with my father. I'm terrible with him. No matter what he does, no matter what he says, he can't do anything right. I don't expect him to, and I don't want him to. I hate that about myself. And Eric. God, I'm afraid he's going to grow up and hate me. I hope he understands, but I don't think he does. He's in a rut, kiddo. You go to work, you go home, you go to work, you go home. When's the last time you went out? Eric and I... Can Never I mind, Eric, on a date. Come on, I haven't had the time. Well, we're going to make the time. You know, there's a lot of fun out there. Some laughs. A little romance. A little sex. Well, <laughs> a lot of sex, if you're lucky. <laughs> you're a good friend. You don't have to thank me.
guy's name again? Warren. 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 Warren Peace. And what does he do? Stockbroker. Mary, look, do me a favor. Please, don't talk police work tonight. It can ruin an appetite. But he knows I'm a cop, though, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, I told Barry to tell him. Good evening, ladies. We're joining Mr. Bungard. Yes, the gentlemen are waiting. Follow me. Hi, girls. Hello, Barry. You look great. Mary Gladsell, meet Warren Livergans. How do you do? Don't shoot. I surrender. <laughs> but you can fisk me. <laughs> okay, I'll ask around. Okay, I'll get back to you. That was downtown. They're setting up a frost detail on 2nd Avenue. Are you interested? What do I do? You pretend you're a prostitute, and then when the John's proposition, you arrest him. What's the point in arresting John's? Seems like a dumb idea. Simple economics. If the buyer's afraid to visit 2nd Avenue, then the sellers are wasting their time working the streets. Are you interested? Ask. It's an extra day off a week. Here's the deal. Steady 4 to 12. Give you more time with your kid. Plus, it'll be a good break from this crust. <laughs> Mary? Donna? You look awful. Thank you. So do you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in ages. I know. I'm working out of the 12th, and I've been flying out of command every chance I get. I can't stand matron duty. I know what you mean. Terrible. All right, folks, if I can have your attention, please. You're going to be covering four different areas of 2nd Avenue. We want you girls to stay well apart from each other. There will be two backup men for each girl in case you run into trouble from the John. Oh, what if we run into trouble from the working girls? They're not going to be happy with strange faces crowding the territory. <laughs> we'll have a patrol car cruise the street. Before you girls get there, the pros will get the message. They'll leave the street. Remember this. No enticement. The John has to make the proposition. He has to ask for a specific sexual act. And he has to offer money. If you mess up on any one of those three items, forget it, you'll be nailed for entrapment. Good luck. We're expecting two collars a night each. Uh, each? Each. under arrest for soliciting prostitution. You've got to be kidding. No, I'm a policewoman. You offered me money for sex, that's against the law. Don't tell me the law, I'm a lawyer. And I work downtown, so I've got connections. Just let's forget this and we'll both go our own way. Officers, this woman just tried to entice me. She offered me sex for money. Jerk, you just blew it. Come with us, please. Hey, guys, come on. I'm a lawyer. Really? What's your name? Jim Edgeworth. Hey, this guy's a lawyer, Jim Edgeworth. No kids, Jim Edgeworth, the lawyer. The lawyer, Jim Edgeworth. Yes. How are the feet? We'll come back. Did you make your quota? Three. Great, you must have something. I don't know if I like that thought. <laughs> Stay on for a while. We'll get a chance to work together. There are all kinds of special duty assignments with plenty of overtime pay. 
That last part sounds good. <laughs> Hello? Uh, just a minute. Eric, turn down the TV. It's long distance. Hello? Yes, this is Mary Glassell. Hello? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? The weather's fine, a little brisk, nothing unusual. I'm sorry, I didn't know. His mail's private. I never read it. I'll talk to him. No, I can't promise that. It'll have to be his decision. Fine. He'll write you. Yes. You too. Goodbye. Why didn't you tell me your father wrote and invited you to spend next summer with him? I don't want to go. It's not what I asked. I figured you'd want me to go. I don't want you to go. Good. But maybe you should think about it. I did. Why don't you want me to go? Because I'm selfish and uh, I like having you around. Good. Of course, if it was me being invited to spend the summer in the Rockies, I'd be tempted. I don't know him. Do you want me to? I don't know. I have three Alan Wayne checks coming in every month. I wouldn't be out here, but are you, are you, uh, are you looking to, to, to buy or are you looking to look? Huh? What, you think it come out in this weather to look? What, what do you want? Well, I'll tell you, I want a $4,000 car for $3,000. And we'll get a lease 26 miles to the gallon in the city. And I want a six-month warranty on the engine and four tires with tread I can bury a silver dollar in. Is that it? Automatic transmission and clean as a priest collar. Okay. Welcome to Fantasy Island. Yeah? out in a minute. He's one of the good guys. Yeah, what's his name? Maggio. You want to talk? Sure. I've been here about three months. I love it. No uniforms, no clocks. Yeah, this uniform stands out like a sore thumb. Oh, don't worry. I'll have you out of it in no time. I guess, uh, when you volunteered for this, you didn't think you'd be working with me, huh? I bet you're right. Okay, here's the deal. Up around the planetarium, the muggers are descending like flies in an outhouse. They're hitting on women on their way home from work. There's no physical threat, just snatch and run. The priest is asking for help, so we're sending two teams up there. You ever worked at decoy before, Barry? Frost, not mugging. That's victimless. Big difference. Here, you're the victim. But you said there's no physical threat. There hasn't been. But muggers are not gentlemen. You want out?
Uh, Joel, circle the block and be ahead of you. I'll be behind you. Got your ID? Yeah. All right. Wear this. What is it? It's the color of the day. Yellow. Or if there's any action, you put the headband on. Every cop in the city's supposed to know the color of the day so he won't shoot you as a perpetrator. Supposed to know? Sometimes they forget. They'll have a great sense of humor. Let's go. Hey, wait a minute. What? Take a look, Dan. Remember those mug shots? Isn't that the guy? It sure looks like it. Who? What guy? There's a rapist working in this area. And I think that's our man. You want to try for him? I'm going to phone the precinct. Hey, what for? He's standing there waiting for us. Sure would be nice. It's up to you, Mary. What do you mean? What do you want me to do? Decoy. Decoy a rapist? Now look, you don't have to do it. We're here for mothers. Sure look good on your record. Or on my tombstone. He doesn't kill Mary, he rapes. Terrific. That's what you're trained for. Well, how would you feel if he raped somebody while we were out after a mugger? What do you want me to do? He wasn't behind you. He saw where you were going. Came into the park down the street. He was parallel with you. Why didn't you use your gun? Because I felt his gun in my side and I figured it was a 25 caliber. And if it was, it probably had a hair trigger. <laughs> what? It is a 25 with a hair trigger. <laughs> I knew what I did tonight. He would never speak to me again. Yeah, but how do you feel? I don't know. I... I feel excited. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Eric, would you get that? Mrs. Massick, and she's very nice. She's also very fat. You know, you of all people should know about tolerance. How come you don't wear a uniform anymore? Because I'm working with the street crime unit, and we don't wear uniforms. What do you do? Well, mainly I pretend to be an innocent housewife, and when someone tries to steal my purse, I arrest them. There. How do I look? Couldn't you get hurt? Nah, there's two big men standing real close. Now, nah, I gotta run. You be nice to Mrs. Massick. Did 
Joe? Do you see anything? Uh, all quiet. Can't feel my toes. I think they're frozen. Would you stop complaining? Think about Dan laying in that trunk. He's probably a stiff by now. You know, maybe this guy doesn't mug cabbies on cold nights. Let's give it another hour. I'm going to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. Hey, let me turn the engine on just for five minutes. You better ask Dan about that. He's the one that's got to breathe the monoxide. Dan, I, I want to turn the engine on, OK? Just for five minutes. He says OK. OK. Joe. I see him. I don't think they're going to a baseball team. Let's get on it. Come on, let's have the money. Okay? I'm a little shaky, but I'm okay. okay Thank you, officer. Hey, officer. Nice work. Yeah, you too. Come on. to call you. Are you Mrs. Glatzel? Yeah. He'll be fine. Nothing's broken. He'll have a bit of a shiner, though. What happened? I was up to bat and I got beaten by a ball. Damn you. And your baseball glove. Why can't you just stay out of my life? Don't blame Grandpa. It wasn't his fault. I've been playing baseball for two years. I'm sorry. I was wondering what was best for you. I know. Give him some growing room. I mean, you needed it. You still do. Talk to you later, okay? It's not only the fact that you disobeyed me. 
It's the fact that you lied. That baseball could have permanently damaged your eye. And then you'd be totally blind. People don't lose their eyes playing baseball. What are the odds? One in a million? Or Barry Rod's getting hit by a car? I want you to promise me you won't play baseball again. No. Then you'll come home immediately after school. And you'll stay home in the apartment. There'll be no TV, even if I have to get rid of it. And that's the way it's going to stay until I have that promise from you. I've decided to visit my dad this summer. Is that a reward for him or punishment for me? I just want to go, okay? Now remember, if you feel uncomfortable and you want to come home, just call me. Six weeks is a long time for a first visit. Thank you. Now don't lose it. I'm not a baby. No, you're not. Is he traveling alone? Yes. I'll take him. Hey. I miss you already. Check out three hours down. Oh, that's okay. I'm in no hurry. Uh, that's uh, 3227. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Can you manage the bag all right? Sure. Don't you scream and you won't get hurt. Give me the purse and the ring. Come on. Freeze! Police! Freeze! He's harder than the market. He's the man in the longest line holding two grapefruits. Can you imagine anyone standing in line if he doesn't have to? Never tell you you're one hell of a cop. Yeah, what's the punchline? No punchline. What do you think of Jerry? Isn't he a hunk? Where'd you find him? We were doing a knock stake out. He's wearing a wedding ring. Is that a prop? He's married. Unfortunately, all the good men are. You should try one sometime. I did. We got a divorce. I don't mean married. I mean cops. I spend enough time working with them. But that's why you should date them. They understand what your problems are, your dinner conversation doesn't make them sick. 
They love to have a good time. They're not cheapskates. Most of them have great bodies. came up with a name for our partner. Uh, uh, in honor of... In honor of Detective, detective third, third Grade, grade Mary, Mary Glassell, Glassell who, who for, three for three months in a row, in a row has made more collars than any other person in the street, street crime, crime unit, unit. Uh, by, uh, by functioning... By functioning as so a housewife... Admirably. So admirably as a housewife... A hooker... A bag lady... A uh, rummy... And other assorted disguises. <clears throat> we now pronounce you the, the one and, and only Muggable Mary. Huggable Muggable Mary. Mary. Stay away from me. Hey, wait. Oh. I said stay away from me. Take it easy. I'm sorry. What in the hell gives you the right to lay your hands on me anyway? Yeah, I'm a cop. And a damn good one. Our relationship is strictly business. Go kiss Joe in the mouth. See how he likes it. I can't stand clowns and I can't stand drunks. You think you can do anything because you got a snootful and hide behind the booze. Well, that doesn't excuse what you did. I'm not hiding seen enough of that crap in my life. Guys getting drunk and... and I am not drunk. Look, I may be crazy, but I don't need a drink to make me brave. I kissed you because I felt good. And you looked good. And I wanted to kiss you. I'm sorry if I offended you, but you already slapped my face in front of everybody, so on the embarrassment scale, I figure we're about even. Am I right? Good. Now, uh, I still like to kiss you. I'm a real good kisser. Please, your neck, just one right. <laughs> scrambled. Mm. Morning after is a bummer, isn't it? I mean, uh, everything's so awkward. You, you wonder why you did what you did and where it's all going to end up. What are you doing? Fixing breakfast. No, I mean, what are you really doing? I'm trying to make it easy for you. Why? Was uh, this too much booze leading to a night of regrets and a lifetime of amnesia? No regrets. But no amnesia. And burnt eggs. <laughs>
are you dreaming about? My son. I thought this was romantic. It is. I was just thinking. This is the first time since he was born that someone else has been responsible for what he's doing this very minute. What he's doing at this very minute is sleeping. <laughs> Even that's a responsibility sometimes. You know, there were times when I'd go into his room in the middle of the night, and I'd just sit there and watch him sleep. He looks so beautiful. And I thank God. I never had a kid. Hmm. I never thought I missed anything. Until now. I was married once, you know. Hmm? How long? Hmm. About 15 seconds. <laughs> well, it was the longest 15 seconds I ever spent in my entire life. Is that why you never date a girl more than twice? Who told you that? <laughs> On a Metzger. Oh, that's my rule. This is our third date. I know. <laughs> hey, when the kid gets back, we can take him to Niagara Falls. Has he ever seen Niagara Falls? Neither him nor me. Oh, great. Great. I can't wait to see your face the first time you look at it. We'll look at it from the Canadian side. That's where you get the best view. Actually, the best time to see it's in the winter. Spray ice is up the trees and the light reflects off the branches. I mean, it's, it's like being on another planet. So why don't we wait until winter? Well, we go again in the winter. Never take one vacation when you can take two. Well, what do we got here? Pull over, I'll take a look. Drink it, huh? Come on, out of the way, out of the way. Oh, my God, please. What happened? He was shot. His, his own daughter did it. Look how she's coming back. Hey, nobody's gonna hurt you. Nobody's gonna hurt you. I don't like it. Let's go. Joe's family. You know, I uh, couldn't say anything but the gun. I thought I was going to die. You could have been killed. 
I could be killed. But we weren't. Are you killing us? Best officers. I, I can't go out on the street again. All right. You got a vacation coming. Take it. No. Look, I'm not going to change my mind. I just can't go out there again. Okay. about your stepmother? She's neat. She rides horses, too. She's tall and blonde. A little too skinny, though. Hey, these are new jeans. They're straight legs. The cowboys wear them. Jay got me two pair. Three western shirts, a hat, boots, belt, swim trunks. They have a swimming pool right near the house. We swim almost every day. You know they ski there in the winter time? Yeah, in the swimming pool? In the Rockies. Oh. Dad said I may be able to come up there for Christmas. Do you want to? Sure, I've never skied before. Also, most important, Dad's company has a medical insurance plan. He's going to put me on it. It means you don't have to be a cop anymore. So, are you going to let him go back there for Christmas? Of course I am. I can't deprive him of those wonderful things. But you know, I am really angry with myself. His father and I have been divorced for nine years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not only envious of Eric, I'm jealous of that tall, skinny, blue-eyed blonde who's swimming and skiing and riding horseback in a Rocky Mountain high while I'm in that smelly room spreading fat bodies looking for drugs. And to top it all off, Eric hates what I'm doing. He'd love for me to quit. And I don't have a reason not to anymore. Are you serious? I don't know. You want another game tonight, Charlie? <laughs> hey, Mary. I'm sorry about your friend. What friend? Ain't you a friend of Donald Metzger's? Yeah, what about her? She bought it last night. Up in Central Park. I need you. We got a 
a psycho proud in that park. He's raped five women the past two months. Donna was one of the three killed. The other two are lucky to be alive. You've worked that park before. You know what's up there. Hundreds of acres with 360 degree access. Hundred cops couldn't secure that place. I've got to catch him with decoys. And you're one of the best I have. So was Donna. What happened to her? She put her life on the line. That's what a cop does, Mary. Not you. I had my day. So did I. Get somebody else. This is boring. So how come every muscle in my back is tense, huh? Can't we gallop a little? Eric, I think a gallop would kill me. Can't we just walk until I get used to the horse? We're gonna have to take the horses back soon. I haven't been on a horse in 15 years. Have a little patience. Whoa. Eric, wait a minute. Excuse me, sir. Uh, could I see your paper for a minute? I'll give it right back. Of course. I'm gonna take a quick ride, okay? are dead. One of them was a friend of mine. She was trying to catch this animal when he killed her. They need me to try and catch him. No, I don't want you to get killed. I know you don't. And I don't want you to get killed. That could have happened if that horse had thrown you. But it wouldn't have. I'm a good rider. I'm a good cop. It's not the same thing. How would you feel if I forbade you to ride a horse again? I guess it's time for both of us to grow up. Can't spend the rest of our lives being terrified for each other. You trained to ride that horse, and I trained to be a cop. You're gonna do it, aren't you? anymore. I won't play baseball. I promise not to play baseball. Don't. The last time I refused to catch this killer, there were three dead women. Now there's one more. I might have prevented that. I'd like to think I can prevent the next one. You might be the next one. It's what I need to do. You don't need to do it. You want to do it. You like it. Friend's right. I like the action. What's that make you less of a cop, Mary? Makes me less of a human. Oh, come on, that's romantic slop. I want this killer. I want a punishment for what he did and prevent him from doing it again. I don't care about motives. I care about results. Are you in? Yeah. Good. I'll get Dan Waters and Mince Pelosi to back you up. Not Dan. Samantha. Not this time. Look, if a guy was about to kill you, name the cop you want to back you up. Sorry. I can't hear you. Dan Waters. Come again. Dan Waters.
realize you've been through these questions a hundred times, but anything you can give us, anything. You are a man. Anything about his walk? The way he approached you? I didn't see him coming. He grabbed me from behind. I'm sorry we were tied up in court. How about his voice? When he never spoke, he just breathed. How about his odor? Any special odor? He just breathed. His eyes. You did see his eyes. Hey. from behind, knife at the throat, and drag him into the bushes. We got two survivors. Neither one can identify him. If the mask disguises his face, why'd he kill him? Why? Because he's crazy, that's why. How many decoys we got out? Four. Food and Mary. What happened to Donna? Same as the others. Why? What happened to her backups? They lost contact. What, didn't they have radios? They didn't work. Look, we tested them beforehand. They worked fine. It's a hilly section. The geography followed us up. Well, what are we supposed to do? Is the geography changed? Find a spot that works with your radio and stick with it. Must be some kind of pattern we can work on. Dogs. Dogs? Yeah, little dogs. He attacks women with little dogs. I'm taking the path on the right. Dan? Dan, can you hear me? Wait a second, Mary, you're breaking up. Mary? Vince? Vince, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Track me until Dan gets clear. sure you won't, but just in case, call Kathy Thomas. Just how late are you planning to stay out? I'm planning to be home at the usual time. The number is just in case. Eric, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Well, anyway, won't you? I'll see you later. I hope you catch him. Thanks.
Okay. Wait a minute. Give me a couple of minutes. Let's talk. What? Come on. If you were wound any tighter, you'd snap. I'm on your side, remember? I'm here because you wanted me here. So talk to me, Mary. I don't know. I just keep thinking about Donna. How could anyone get close enough to take her with a knife? I walk that path. It's wide enough to see somebody jumping out of the bushes. She was a fighter. She knew the guy was coming at her with a knife. How could he do it? Maybe she lost her concentration. Maybe she, uh, she panicked when she realized her backups were out of radio range. Mary, you can still back out. No. I want you to wear this. What is it? Uh, it's protection. It's leather. I made it for you. Wear it uh, around your neck. Under your sweater. Damn. About us. Forget it. I got that message loud and clear. You want to be the only cop in your life. We love Frank Reinecke. I'll send him a thank you note. Yeah. And I'll send you one. He's dead. Are you all right? You're shaking. You scared the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. 
you upstairs? I can manage. What are you, uh, what are you gonna do with your sick leave? Oh, spend some time with Eric. Thanks for everything. How'd you like to stop by Sunday? I'd like you and Eric to meet. What time? 6 a.m. too early? <laughs> Make it 11. I'll pick you up for breakfast. <laughs> Mrs. Glaxo, what happened? Fell off my horse. 